Charles L. Chip Collins was born in Pee Wee Valley in Oldham County, Kentucky in 1919. While taking a walk with his grandfather on a rainy afternoon, five-year-old Chip stumbled across a World War I biplane grounded in a nearby field. When the pilot asked, Sonny, you want to touch that airplane? It was all the encouragement he needed. As Chip later said of that moment, it transferred something to him that has stuck his whole life. Collins soon discovered Bowman Field in Louisville where he would hang out and do an odd job or two to earn airplane rides and at the age of 16 got his first lesson in a Piper Cub. After graduation from Louisville Male High School, he continued his pilot training and acquired his private pilot's license in 1938. In 1941, he joined the Royal Canadian Air Force where he trained as a fighter pilot but the United States was soon in the war and Chip felt it was his patriotic duty to fly for America. In 1942, he transferred to the United States Army Air Corps where he was an instructor in twin engine aircraft and progressed through B-17 and B-29 training. In 1944, he was assigned to a B-29 group as an aircraft commander where he flew 35 missions against Japan during the last two years of the war. After the war, Chip was assigned to Wright Field in Dayton, Ohio. At that time, Dayton was the Air Corps' primary center for research and development. At Wright, Chip attended test pilot school and was soon doing flight test evaluations of captured enemy aircraft as well as tests on many experimental Allied aircraft. During his military career, Chip received many awards, including the Distinguished Flying Cross, Air Medal with Four Clusters, and Distinguished Service Medal. In 1947, Dr. Charles Stark Draper of Massachusetts Institute of Technology asked Chip to come to work for MIT as a test pilot and flight facility manager at its instrumentation laboratory. Dr. Draper would later become known as the father of inertial navigation, and Chip eagerly accepted the job but stayed in the Air Force Reserve where he would serve for 30 years. In 1949, Chip oversaw the construction of the MIT flight facility. As the facility's manager and senior engineering test pilot, he participated in over 50 different research and development programs on a variety of experimental aircraft systems. During Chip's tenure, he and the laboratory made a number of historic achievements, most notably while doing work with the advanced inertial guidance systems. Using gyroscopes to sense changes in direction and accelerometers for speed, it would allow aircraft, as well as other types of vehicles, to navigate without any outside references. This was the same technology that would later be used to get the Apollo spacecraft to the moon and back. CHIPS Group worked on many other engineering programs that advanced airborne fire control, beam riding missile control, fly-by-wire, and auto intercept systems. In addition, they worked on the variable stability control system used in aircraft and helicopters. Chip served as pilot in command of the first historic coast-to-coast -coast, non-stop pure inertial navigation flight of a C-97 Stratocruiser. That flight was later recreated and documented by CBS News commentator Eric Severide and filmed for the national TV program Conquest. These men are hitching their wagon to a star. The wagon is this airplane. I'm Eric Severide. This is Hanscom Air Force Base near Boston, Massachusetts. We are going to fly from this airfield to Los Angeles, California, but it won't be like any flight that you or I have ever made. This is the first public test flight of a new and revolutionary method of navigation called inertial guidance. For the purposes of navigation, this plane is now cut off from all outside communication. Fire has taken over. From now on, it's our pilot, co-pilot, navigator, our radio, our radar, our compass. As far as navigation is concerned, we could be flying in a sealed box, deaf and blind. This has been an extraordinary journey, courtesy of Spire. For me and the Conquest crew, of course, this has been mostly an adventure. For Dr. Draper and his colleagues, this has been a test, and a successful test, of the theories and the engineering that made Spire possible. And maybe one could say this is one small step toward the age of space travel.
Inertial navigation is now being integrated with GPS and remains a key flight navigation system today. Chip has over 15,000 flight hours in more than 60 different aircraft. His pilot certificates include commercial, instrument, multi-engine, ATP, and CFI. In 1979, Chip was the recipient of the Aero Club of New England's Godfrey Lowell Cabot Award for outstanding contributions to aviation and the U.S. space program. He was also cited by the Massachusetts State Senate for contributions to aviation and space. In 1996, Chip was the recipient of the National Aeronautics Association Elder Statesman of Aviation Award. Also that year, he was featured in the University of Maine's History Department television documentaries Ghosts on the Road to Tinian, and Thunder from Tinian. His contributions to aviation are also highlighted in a book entitled Aiming at Targets by Dr. Robert C. Siemens, Jr., the former Secretary of the Air Force and former Deputy Director of NASA. Chip is a fellow in the International Society of Experimental Test Pilots, a former National Director of the Air Force Association, past president of the Aero Club of New England, a member of the Order of Quiet Birdmen, and a member of the Military Pilots Order of Dedelians. Chip and his wife Beverly have three daughters, Kirsten, Karen, and Carla, and three grandchildren. They reside today in Westford, Massachusetts. It is therefore fitting that Charles L. Chip Collins, a boy who at age five touched an airplane and has gone on to touch aviation, be enshrined in the official Aviation Hall of Fame of the Commonwealth of Kentucky.